glory. Would you grab your Bibles, please, your swords, and turn to Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man, or curses a man who trusts in flesh himself. Amen? It makes flesh his strength. Everybody there? Whose heart departs from the Lord. So when you do this, your heart departs from the Lord. Your heart's no longer focused on the Lord. It's focused on you. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. And shall not see when good comes. In other words, it's going to miss opportunities. Too busy of eyes on self. Hmm. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear. Will not what? Well, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Will not what? Fear. Hmm. Fear. Will not fear when what? Heat comes, trouble comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious because of fear in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can, un who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the thoughts and minds and the intents, motives, and attitudes of individuals, even to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his doings. In other words, he knows what our intents are. He knows what our attitude is. He knows what our motive is. And he says those are things that you sow if they're not pleasing to him, and you will reap. Does everybody understand that? Listen, we are in a time right now where there's so much stuff going on that's incredible. I mean, they're, they're, like I've shared before, the enemy's releasing everything possible to bring distraction, to bring uh, selfishness. One of the things that he's doing, he's bringing, he, there's a release of self-centered spirit. It's called self-centered. Being self-centered, it's flesh-centered. Blessed. So in, in this, you know, when an individual becomes self-centered, they become rebellious. Oh, they can play it outside, but inside there's a rebellious spirit also. Amen? They're bucking inside badly. <laughs> but they ain't bowing. Not yet. Sometimes they got to get humiliated. But blessed, in other words, when it says blessed, it means we accept the counsel of the Lord. Curse are those who reject it. Our responsibility is to dismantle the curse that recycles in the spirit of self-confidence. We must dismantle it. See, because the Bible tells us that the spirits come back, there's a curse that recycles all the time. Even ancestral curses recycle. And if you don't break them, they come back. Those spirits come back and try to reattach you to them. And then that curse comes back. Amen? Amen? Then that same attitude, that same motive, that same whatever starts manifesting again. One of the things the enemy does, tries to do is, you know, he tries to bring us to ourself all the time. And that's his job. And, and this is where we have got to be warned, learn to overcome. We have to be alert. Amen. We have to be consistent to be alert. Because this is a ploy of the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 1. When an individual falls into that spirit, self must be the center of everything to be re and recognized. Has everybody got it? Self must be the center of everything and wants recognition. The 
Bible tells us in Psalm 1, blessed is the man who what? walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen? Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And the seat of the scornful is also offensive. When individuals, in other words, because people live out of emotion. That's when the enemy loves to get people emotion. Amen? See, love is a choice. The Bible tells us what love is. It's long-suffering and tender and so forth. There's a, des a desire in love to love, which comes out of the spirit, out of the heart. But when it's God's love, there's no, there's, that's not there. See, God's love overcomes all of self-centeredness. God's love overcomes all emotional. God's love comes, overcomes all offense and rejection and self, you know, selfish ambition. God's love overcomes all of that. But when a person comes into the spirit of self-centeredness, there's a form of love, but it's really not love. It's just a form. Does everybody get it? That's why the Bible says it's a form of godliness. Oh, I love you, this and that. But they really don't. Inside, there's offense, bitterness, unforgiveness. Amen? And we see it all over the world right now. That's why the Bible warns us many will come in his name. Many Christians will come up. They'll try to come in to, as stealth, undercover. And they'll try to take hold and, 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 and become self-centered of everything. Because they want, that spirit wants what? Recognition. Amen? Let's go further here. It says here, verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law he meditates day and night. In other words, he focuses on the word of God. Just think about if people really focused on the word, if they really knew what the word love meant in the, in the Bible, they'd be able to judge themselves whether they're really walking in God's love or not. Amen? His delight is in the law of the Lord or his word, and in the law he meditates, he focuses day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever... He does, shall what? Prosper. Because God's with them. Amen? Now, there's a prosperity that's not from God. The devil loves to prosper people. Amen? I mean, look how many prosperous, wealthy people there are. They're demon the worshipers. <laughs> Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. <laughs> Remember, this is where an individual must put the, the word of God, puts practice, the word of God, the words of the Lord in his counsel. His counsel. You know, you got to think about if you ever received counsel and just washed it off to the side have you received counsel from the lord and just said you know what I, it's okay oh god knows my heart every time we reject god's counsel we reap we don't reap that then and there but the reaping is there amen the counsel of the lord is vital to all of us the bible says in the in the multitude of counsel there's safety in wisdom safety and what wisdom so when god's trying to bring somebody into a place of safety and release more wisdom and that person steps on it that's dangerous very dangerous amen let's go to genesis 6 verse 1 Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born to them that the sons of God, the angels, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. And they took 
wise to themselves of all whom they chose. So that some of them had mighty many wives. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. These were the mighty men uh, uh, who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of his thoughts, of his heart, known as imagination. Imagination. I'm going to say it again, imagination. Because imagination is what you see. Amen? And sometimes people's imaginations are flawed. Why? Because of a self-centered spirit. Is everybody with me? Praise God. And, uh, um, and he said, and, and, and then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every intent of the thoughts of his heart, imagination, was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a man, a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Now remember that the fallen angels and, the, and their offsprings and their Nephilim, the offsprings, they intermarried, amen, before and after the flood. Mixed breeding with all flesh. Now today, all flesh carries the Nephilim gene. All flesh. So you didn't get away with it. Every one of us carried the Nephilim gene, one way or another. Thoughts, imaginations, perceptions, ungodly things, attitudes, intentions, they were ungodly. We beat that, we fight that every single day, don't we? Amen. It's called flesh. Your flesh is an offspring of a Nephilim, the Nephilim gene. And so in this, that gene is associated with that self-centered spirit. It's always wanting to please itself. If it can't please itself, it gets angry. It gets frustrated. It's always looking, because that's how it lives. Remember, works of the flesh please self. Amen. I'll go to Luke 17, 26. Let's begin. As it was in the days of Noah, so it'll be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day he who is on a housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. <laughs> whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will what? Preserve it, yes. 
These are what we call the days of Noah or the days of Lot. We're in them right now. Why? What is the main spirit that's hindering everyone? It's called the self-centered spirit. And every area. I mean, behind it, we know that it's an antichrist spirit. But it's also always bringing an individual to themselves. They're number one. But they may have a form that they don't, they're all, they have a false humility and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, look how many religions are out there. I mean, you see all these monk guys and so forth and all these, um, whatever they are, the guru dudes dancing under the corners and, oh, they got a form of godliness and false humility. But everything to them is self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Amen. Go to Hebrews 11. Now, this spirit manipulates with fear. Fear. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. Uh, Hebrew 11. Verse 7. It says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. In other words, Noah got counsel from the Lord. Amen? He moved with godly fear. In other words, oh, he accepted the counsel of the Lord. And it says, And he prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. It was a prophetic warning from God. It was a counsel from God. He accepted the warning, and he prepared for the escape. Does everybody get it? Because God told him he was going to flood the world. So what did he do? He built an ark. You know, it didn't take him, like, a weekend to build an ark. It took him almost 100 years. I mean, think about that. His kids were, some of them weren't even born yet. <laughs> and he started building an ark. But again, it, it is so vitally important because what did he do? He accepted the counsel of the Lord, he believed the warning, he accepted the warning, he accepted the counsel of the warning, and he began to what? Prepare. He began to what? Prepare. That's what God is doing all over the world right now. Where everything's being shaken, everything's whatever. Listen, he's preparing. And if we're not going to take heed to that warning about this spirit and all these other spirits, and especially about the works of the flesh and selfish ambitions and all these other goofy things that bring people out of divine order. They're going to be moved. The enemy will move them. Because they're self-seeking. And if they can't get, if that spirit can't get fed where they are, they'll go to somewhere else and try and get fed. They're always looking for something to be recognized and fed. Amen? Prophetic warning, counsel. Now, so um, Noah took counsel. He accepted it. He began to prepare uh, for the escape because he didn't want to get destroyed. And what did God tell him to do? He told him to build a boat, an ark. That was his covering. God was covering Noah by saying, cooperate with me. And I'm going to cover you in this ark. Hebrew 10 and verse 26. Hallelujah. What does it say? If we sin willfully. Does everybody see that? If we rebel willfully, if we reject counsel willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth or the counsel from the Lord, there no longer remains a covering. Does everybody see this? 
but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace, which is the spirit of counsel? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen? <laughs> Why? Well, because <laughs> they reject it. The Bible says, Submit to God, resist the devil. That means submitting to God's counsel. I, I, I can't express that enough. How the counsel of the Lord is vitally important. And people just neglect it. Eh, no big deal. I'm just going to do what I want. Nobody gets away with it. It creeps up on you and will take you over every time. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And you know what happens? It comes when you least expect it. <laughs> Why? What does the devil do? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? So that's an open, a, open door for the enemy to come at some time to steal, kill, and destroy. That's where people have a, what we call a, a holes in their purse. <laughs> they can't hold on to money. Or they're expecting certain things and they don't come through, you know. And I'm not saying every time that sometimes it's just a God delay, amen. But sometimes it's the area where what we've sowed, we're reaping. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, verse 1, let's speak it together. But know this, in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, and we know this. Lovers of what? Money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control or control over self. Why? Because they are self-centered. The brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Traitors, treasonous. Look at what's going on in the world today in this country. I mean, this, this, this country has been treasoned by so many people. It's incredible. Many traitors. It's the same thing in the body of Christ. There's a lot of individuals that are treasonous. Traitors. Headstrong. Why? Because they're controlled by this self-centered spirit. He said in, in verse 6, For these are the sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men or women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. They're always learning and never able to have dominion over self. I mean, that's the bottom line. Never, they, they have no control. They react instead of respond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're self-centered, selfish ambitions, unable to disconnect from self and become team players in the kingdom of God. Allowing the flesh to dictate direction through their emotions. Rejecting the warnings of counsel. In James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. 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 Hallelujah. That his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom. The wisdom of God. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, 
Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but of his earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first, what? Pure. Then what? Peaceable. It's always looking for peace. Gentle. Willing to yield and surrender and submit. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, ooh, and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, the wisdom that promotes itself with the self-centered spirit is demonic. Oh man, it can be smart, man. There's some. I'm telling you, there's some wonderful, smart individuals. But they're demonized. They're self-centered. And they're good people. But they're idiots. And they constantly re recycle back in that self-centered spirit all the time. And they blame everybody else for it. Romans 8. Man, we're seeing this all over the world. It's incredible. I've been watching some of the, uh, where Congress is interviewing these individuals now because now the, uh, the Republicans are investigating all kinds of stuff. And these people are just downright lying like it's okay. They're questioning. And, they're, and they're, they got all the proof right in front of them. They're just like, they're so self-centered. It's incredible. And their wisdom is so demonic, it's incredible. Their common sense is deluded. And they're trying to blame Republicans and everybody else of what they're doing. And they try to twist the words, everything they say. Oh, that's, that's one of the main things of that spirit. That self-centered spirit will twist everything. Everything. It thinks, it imagination, suspicious, fearful. Woo! Afraid they might get caught. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in G Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Here you are. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in this is it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So where's sin? It's in your flesh. <laughs> that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the flesh, things of the earth, self-centeredness, selfishness, selfish ambitions. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. But to be physically, carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. They'll have a form of godliness, but they'll be carnal. They can use the gifts. They can pray in tongues. They can praise and worship. But you'll know them by their desires, by their words, by their attitude, by their motives. Amen. And by their emotional state of being. In Psalm 106, verse 40. We are being warned to be careful. Let's speak it. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, his own people. So that he had hoard his own inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the Gentiles, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them. 
and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel. They rejected his counsel and were brought low for their neck. In other words, the Lord had to humble them, humiliate them, shame them. Verse 44. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And for their sake, he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of his mercies. He also made them be what? Be what? Pitied. Pitied. By all those who what? Carried them away what? So they were still captive, weren't they? Because they rebelled the counsel. They were brought low. They were humbled, embarrassed, ashamed. But God still loved them no matter what. But they were still taken what? In captive. He didn't free them. He let them to go in captive. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, our, of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So listen. Everything's available for me and you. Because it doesn't come the way you want it to or how it comes. Maybe not in the right gift wrap. I don't know. Doesn't mean it's not coming. His promises are true. They're real. Amen? Don't fall in a place of disappointment or discouragement because of the things that are going around in your world. Come out of your world and get in his world. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Desire, desire, desire. That self-centered spirit has always got a desire to fulfill self. Always. It carries selfish ambitions. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, the same way of thinking. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for himself, for the loss of men, but for the what? Will of God. In other words, come out of yourself. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same fold, in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. Because God will reveal things while you're praying. Amen? He'll show you. He's going to always reveal. He's going to, I'm telling you, God speaks to me more in the area of when I'm, when I'm praying, praying in the spirit, so forth. He'll give me vision or whatever it is. He'll tell me things that need to be done. Well, even while I'm praying, all of a sudden it comes. Whoa. But uh, most of the time it's through vision. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. Amen? Don't fake it. Make it. Hallelujah. For love will cover a multitude of, not lust, love, God's love. Amen. Multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. 
as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If everyone speaks, let him speak the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. There are things you can do that somebody else can't. Stay in your calling. Amen. That's what God tells us. Stay in your calling. But see, self-centered wants to fulfill everyone's calling. Amen. And I'm going to close at Luke 9. In verse 23. Then Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. What, for what profit is it that a man, if he gains the whole world, and he himself is destroyed or lost? Whoever is ashamed of me, my words of him, the Son of Man, will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Well, I'm believing a lot of us ain't going to taste death because I really believe God is coming soon. Amen. But he's preparing us so we can escape. Amen. So that we are found worthy of escape. Remember, the walk is inward. You can pretend all you want outward, but God knows where we are inwardly. Whether we're self-centered, selfish ambition, if our motives, imagination is always a promoting of ourselves. It doesn't mean it's not going to come. It's what you do with it. That's why he's warning us. Be warned. Be prepared. Be alert. Deny yourself. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your word. We ask that you seal your word to each and every one of us, that it will grow and bear fruit for your glory, constantly reminding us through the Holy Spirit of denying ourselves and giving us the discernment and wisdom to see things through so that we may sense that spirit knowing that our flesh is against God. That we may walk in the spirit to keep our flesh crucified. It's when we come out of the spirit that the flesh starts to take over again. So Lord, be glorified in these temples and let your anointing continue to increase in our lives so we maintain the thirst and hunger for your righteousness and the denial of ourselves. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.